There are a lot of amazing mods for Slay the Spire. The modding community is always so hard at work providing us with free content. And in this video, I'm going to go over 4 mods that you can install to add some more content to spice up the Spire that still stays within the design and feel of the base game. Similar to the video I made last year that covered Replay the Spire, Infinite Spire, The Jungle, and the classic Slimebound. So first of all, let's talk about Hubris. Similar to Replay the Spire, it is a very large general content pack that adds a bunch of cards for the vanilla classes, a few events, a couple of bosses, and most important of all, a ton of crazy awesome relics. The cards are only a few for each class except for the Watcher, but they are all pretty interesting additions to their pools. I'll give my favorite example for each one. Ironclad now has Cleaving Finish, a simple attack that will return back to his hand if it slays an enemy, and the Silent can now find Sleight of Hand, which discards a card and makes it cost zero until she plays it. And the Defect can now come across Power Surge, a card that gives it two focus at the start of every combat, but loses that focus when you drive. It. There are also a few really cool colorless cards added, like Sneak, that comes with a random cost to draw cards based on that cost. As cool as some of those cards are, the main draw with Hubris is in its relics. There are a bunch, and they are really, really cool. The common relics are pretty simple, like 10 foot pull, making you take 50% less damage outside of combat and Slimy Hat that increases your maximum hand size by 2, but things start to get a little more interesting with the uncommon relics. A couple of my favorites include Cunning Disguise that lets you pick another class to see extra card rewards for, and Reverence, a relic that lets you right click to activate once per turn, play and exhaust an attack from your hand. Some of these new relics have synergies when paired with certain vanilla relics, like Sphere of Dissonance, which normally applies three vulnerable to a random enemy at the start of combat, has a synergy with Juju Bracelet to also heal you 3 HP whenever you enter a question room. Some of these rare relics are just absolutely bonkers insane, like Xylophone, which lets you turn a 0 or 1 cost card of your choice into an X cost card, or the short range teleporter that lets you jump past rooms twice per act. Spice is another rare relic that I really like. It simply gives you 8 max HP and 1 extra card per turn. That's pretty good, but it is also highly addictive. This means that all of your future relic rewards might be replaced with more spice, which you can pick up to increase this relic stacks. The second spice gives you 16 max HP and 1 dexterity, which is just absolutely amazing. But anything beyond that, you'll start losing 8 max HP per stack, but gain some extra strength. The more spices you take, the higher the chance seems to be for more spices to appear. And it even gets to the point where your card rewards are replaced by spices as well. This mod also adds a bunch of events. Some of these are pretty simple things you'd expect, but there are a few really interesting relics that come from these events. This Act 2 event, the Experiment, will ask you to sacrifice all but one of your max hit points to get this Bottled Heart Relic, which has charges based on the maximum HP sacrificed, and gives you one temporary HP per charge at the start of each combat. Also has a synergy with the Necronomicon to gain an additional 10 charges. This Act 1 event gives you the Towel, a relic that makes all future relic rewards give you a choice between two. Then we get a bunch of new boss relics. Some give you an extra energy per turn like you'd expect, with downsides like Virtuous Blindfold makes you not able to see the full map, and Grand Sneko Eye that transforms two cards at the start of each turn. Some other boss relics are just super strong and cool, like Stopwatch, which you can activate to take an extra turn up to six times for the entire run and the scarier mask that makes the weakest enemy flee from any multi-enemy fights you encounter. This mod adds two act bosses. The Musket Hawk in Act 2 starts with this Piercing Rounds passive, which makes half of its damage go through block. He'll attack you for the first few turns for a medium amount of damage, nothing too scary, but then he'll spend a turn charging up to remove his Piercing Rounds passive and then hit you for a comically large amount, and then he'll regain that Piercing round passive and repeat the cycle. The Grand Sneko is an Act 3 boss with a different style of attacking than any other monster in the game, using these orbs. 
The first orb you'll have channeled every time you fight him is the Hypnotic Orb, which will apply a befuddled debuff to you, forcing you to choose two cards to transform at the beginning of every turn. The three orbs after that are Lightning Orbs that get evoked for 8 damage each. You can tell how many orbs he's about to evoke by the number next to his attack indicator. After this first set, he'll start getting some different, crazier orbs, like the Warp Orb that will summon more enemies like Snekos and Priests, Miasma that'll apply a bunch of debuffs to you, and Frost that'll give block to all enemies. He'll also be gaining focus from these Plasma Orbs every few turns, but his unfocused passive causes him to lose one focus every time he takes attack damage. If you have Replay the Spider installed, you can use its mod config to disable any custom modded bosses. If you do this, I'd recommend disabling the Grand Sneko because he's kind of a piece of f***ing sh**. This mod also adds two custom run modifiers, one that simply adds this new Hubris Curse to your starter deck, and another where you play as the Merchant. The Merchant has a starter deck of all four classes, strikes, and defense, alongside two Merchant's hands, two cost attacks that give you gold when fatal. He starts with the Nice Rug Relic, which gives him one plated armor for every 50 gold that you have in the beginning of each combat. This Merchant class doesn't have any new cards added other than the starters, but you'll come across cards from any class as if you had Prismatic Chard. It's really cool that there's like this new custom class hidden in this mod. I really like playing as this guy, it's pretty interesting. And that is Hubris, the really cool general content mod. In total, it adds over 20 cards and over 50 relics, which are sure to add some spice to your runs. The Blue Laboratory is a pretty new mod that came out in September that adds a ton of new content in the form of potions. 45 new potions to be exact, over doubling the amount of the base game. There are some basic potions like Frost Heart Potion that discards your hand to gain 2 plated armor for each card, and Fruit Punch that deals 10 damage against 2 max HP, but you'll also come across some of the crazier potions. Null Potion that shuffles a void into your draw pile every turn and makes you deal 3 damage whenever you draw a status, and Enraging Potion which makes you gain 2 strength every time you play a skill but lose 1 strength per turn. There are a lot of class-specific potions for every rarity. Simple things like Coolant Vial for the Defect, channeling 2 Frost, and Midnight Oil for the Watcher, which scries 4 and draws 1 card. From really crazy potions like Envenomed Coating for the Silent, making your attacks apply 5 Poison reduced by 1 for each card played, and the Entrenched Potion for the Ironclad that makes your block persist for 4 turns. The rare potions in this mod are pretty cool. The base game only had 10, now we have 21. Empty Bottle gives you an extra potion slot. Impenetrable Potion gives you just about any defensive buff you can think of, including Buffer and Blur. And Heartbeat Potion makes it so you cannot take more than 16 damage per turn, but it causes you to take 1 damage per card played. The amount of fun content added by the Blue Laboratory is really crazy. I never expected I'd have this much fun with some more potions, but it does make sense since these potions are all really well designed. With this mod installed, expect a lot more variety in your runs with the pool of potions being over doubled. The Cursed is the class mod that I've chosen for this video because it really feels like an unofficial 5th character. With a simple and easy to follow design, just another poor human forced to climb the spire for an eternity. This class is all about playing around with curses. Your starting relic, Black Magic 101, will draw you one extra card per turn as long as you have a curse in your draw pile. Your starting deck already starts with the curse, Dregs, which is just a simple unplayable curse similar to Injury. Another starter card, Cursed Wand, will deal some damage, gain some block, and add another Dregs to your hand. Curses can be extremely beneficial for this class. The simplest and first use that you'll find for them is using these right cards, which can exhaust any card in your hand, but if it exhausts a curse, it'll activate its right effect. You start your deck with Cleanup Workshop, a zero energy right card that you can use to gain three block and draw one card if it exhausts a curse, upgraded to draw two cards. Some other powerful right cards that you'll encounter are Smokescreen, which will normally gain block, but also apply weak to all enemies when its rights go off, Released Strength, which will give you three strength when its right goes off. You'll also find attacks that benefit off of having curses in your hand, like Spiteful Strike refunding the energy cost if there's a curse in hand, Magic Bullets dealing 
damage for every curse in your hand, and Demon Sword, exhausting all curses in your hand to gain one strength each. There are a lot of cards that create curses, like an entire pool of cursed cards that create dregs, and cards that create random curses, like Shock and Awe, which will deal a ton of single target damage but puts two random curses into your draw pile. And remember Hubris, the general content mod that added a bunch of cool relics we talked about earlier? That mod also adds a whole bunch of cool new curses that interact in some really unique ways with this cursed class. There are a lot of curses based off of the 7 deadly sins, like Greed, an ethereal curse that you can play to permanently add another to your deck, giving you 5 extra gold at the end of combat for each Greed in your deck, and Gluttony, making all played cards exhaust while it's in your hand. Disease is another really cool curse. It retains, and at the end of your turn, it'll create another copy of itself into your discard pile, which would normally be so detrimental on any other class, but a curse that retains is extremely beneficial on this class. Curses aren't the only way to play this class. There are two other big archetypes, Bleeding and Circles. Bleeding is pretty simple, you apply this debuff through various basic cards and powers that will cause the enemy to lose HP equal to its stacks every time the enemy attacks, and it's reduced by one stack per turn. This can be absolutely devastating against enemies that attack multiple times, but cards like Ultimate Pain and x cost that makes all enemies lose their HP by their bleed x times can make bleed become even more of a powerful scaling mechanic for really any enemy that you're fighting. Circles are unplayable cards that have an effect while they're in your hand. There are 7 circles in total. The simple ones are Circle of Flame that deals 2 damage to all enemies whenever you play an attack, and Circle of Corruption that deals 5 damage to all enemies whenever you play a skill. There are some more advanced ones that you can use to play around with your energy, like Circle of Focus will give you an extra energy every time you play a card that costs 3 when upgraded 2, and Circle of Wind Fury will draw you a card whenever you play a 0 cost card. And the one rare circle is Circle of Abyss, which will give you 2 block every single time a card is played, and if the circle itself is exhausted, which you can very easily do with a lot of the right cards, you'll gain an extra energy. And beyond your starting deck, there are also a few alternate game modes for this class that you can activate through the mod's config. These modes will simply change your starter relic and starter deck to fit a certain theme like Endless Strikes, Strength Machine, Heavy Machine Gun, and there are a lot more. These alternate starter decks are ridiculously powerful, but it's really cool that they show you the kind of amazing combos that you are able to get with this class. It definitely got me thinking a lot harder about the cards and synergies that I'm picking. It made me appreciate how well designed this class is a lot more. So the Cursed has been one of my favorite modded classes to play for a while. I love how it explores this whole design space of curses, which I don't think was explored enough in the base game personally. It will affect your decisions so heavily in certain events or relics that give curses like Cursed Key or Cursed Bell and stuff like that. I really like this class mod, I'd highly recommend playing it. Wandering mini bosses adds a new challenge to 40% of your runs, or all of your runs if you change the settings, where a mini boss will appear in some of your hallway fights to torment you with their very unique and sometimes deadly movesets. You'll encounter your mini-boss many times throughout your run. There are 8 different mini-bosses, which you can enable or disable at will. Each one will do their own thing, keep their HP for the next encounter, and upon death, they will drop a special and super strong relic based on their design. So meet the Gremlin Knight, the energetic love child of the champ and the Gremlin Knob. He'll attack you from the back, similar to how the Act 4 Elite fight works. He starts every combat with 50 block and a barricade to keep it between turns, and his enraged passive causes him to gain 1 strength every time he takes damage. He'll spend his turns debuffing you and dealing a little bit of damage, and on death, he will drop the other Gremlin Horn, a relic that gives you energy and card draw the first time you inflict vulnerable or weak per turn. And here's the Immortal Flame. This guy will add a burn into your draw pile every time you attack him, and he'll apply an inner flame buff to all of his allies. That makes him lose 10 HP and gain 4 strength at the end of their turn. The Flame himself will hit you with a bunch of multi-attacks, and his allies can become really dangerous with that extra strength if not dealt with quickly, and upon death, 
the flame will drop the carry on flame relic that deals 50% of the enemy's max HP to all enemies when they die. And there are a bunch of more mini bosses. Some will steal your gold, some will give you gold, and some will just mess with you. You can enable and disable any of these mini bosses in the mod config if any of these are too challenging or just too annoying for you to deal with. This mod does add some challenge to the game, but it makes hallway fights a lot more interesting. When you're playing on a class that you've mastered or maybe you're on a lower ascension level that you're used to, once these mini bosses are defeated though, the insanely powerful relics that they drop make that challenge well worth it. So those are the four mods that I've chosen to add some general content to slay the spire that stays within the feel and the design of the base game. I hope you liked it. I appreciate you watching all the way through. If you like content like this, I make a lot of it and plan on making a lot more. So you can subscribe if you're into that. So have a great day and I will see you next time.